Hey guys, my name is Rajas and I am a member at the GNU Linux users group in IT Durgapur. And in this video, I will be showing you how to dual boot Ubuntu alongside Windows. Now, you might feel underconfident, but don't worry, I will be covering most of the things in the video along with places to be careful. So, let's dive in. Now, before we proceed, we have a short disclaimer and a few things to keep in mind. In some cases, dual booting might go wrong, but it's better to have a data backup and Windows image backup before we begin with the installation. If you have a Mac or Surface laptop, do not try to dual boot. Keep a pen drive of minimum 4 GB of space handy. Keep your laptop plugged in at all times so that it does not get switched off in the middle of the installation process. Also advise that you keep a secondary internet source ready in case your Wi-Fi drivers do not work in Ubuntu. Seeing on the screen right now is the flow that we are going to follow during the installation of Ubuntu on our laptops. Now the first thing what we are going to do is burn the image file of Ubuntu on the said pen drive using a software called Rufus. After we do so, you can call the pen drive as a USB live booting stick. Once we have a live booting stick. It is time to make some space for Ubuntu. We will be using the Windows Disk Management to create partitions and free space. Then we will finally plug and live boot Ubuntu on our systems and then follow the simple installer and we are done. Enough with the explanation, let's get to the action. First thing we will do is check our boot mode. You can either press Windows plus R or else search for the run application. Then type in msinfo. 32.exe Now this will list all essential information regarding your system. Check for the line which says BIOS mode UEFI. In some cases you might find legacy and if that is the case then the following video is not meant for you. But don't worry, we will be linking down another video for legacy systems. Next step we will do is download Ubuntu image file. We'll simply go to Google and search for Ubuntu 20.04 LTS download. Now it's child's play. Just click on the first link from ubuntu.com and you'll find the direct download link for Ubuntu. Now what is LTS? LTL, LTS stands for long term support, which means you'll have 5 years of free security and maintenance updates guaranteed. Now once you click on download, the download will begin. File size is above 2 GBs and it will approximately take time according to your internet speed. Once you are done downloading with Ubuntu, it's time to download Rufus. Just go to Google and type it Rufus download and you will find the direct download link on the website rufus.ie. It's just 1 MB, it will hardly take time. Once we have downloaded Rufus. It is time to execute it. But first, we need to plug in a pen drive and make sure the pen drive does not contain important data as it will be formatted in the process. The name of your pen drive will appear in the drop down list. Next, you need to browse for the Ubuntu image file and make sure the target system is UEFI and the partitioning scheme is set to GPT. You can rename the pen drive in the text box here. Rufus will ask you whether you want to burn an ISO image or a DD image. Click on ISO and press OK. Your pen drive will be formatted after this and the ISO image of Ubuntu will be burnt on the same. Once this is done, congratulations, you now have a live booting stick. As you can see, the contents of the pen drive are now modified. The next step is to make free space for Ubuntu. Go to my computer or this PC and on the top left find a button named manage. Now in this dialog box find disk management in the left panel and click on it. You can now see your partitioning scheme. Our job is to shrink one of the volumes to make some free space. If you have enough space in your SSD, shrink some space from SSD or else shrink some space from the rightmost labeled partition. 
right click on the partition and press shrink volume. 50 gigabytes of space are sufficient for Ubuntu. Now our job is to re restart our system. Once you press restart, plug in your pen drive. While the screen goes black, press F2, F9 or F10 depending on the brand of your laptop and change the order of boot. As you can see, I changed my order to USB hard drive UEFI USB. This process is called live booting. As you can see, there might be some content on your terminal, but do not be afraid. Ubuntu on the first installation will check your disks. If you do not want to check your disks, press Ctrl C. Welcome to Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. You can always try Ubuntu without installing it. As you can see, let's take a quick tour of our Ubuntu. There are already some pre-installed applications. Now once you have made up your mind to install Ubuntu, it's very easy from here. All you need to do is just double click on install Ubuntu. Select your language. Now it is suggested that you check your keyboard layout. Press shift 1, 2, 3, 4 through 9 and check if all the symbols are printed correctly on the screen. Ubuntu has a very simple GUI based installer. It is recommended that you connect to a Wi-Fi source. If your Wi-Fi driver is not recognized by Ubuntu, it is time for you to plug in your mobile and use your mobile's Ethernet. Now you have some options regarding your installation. If you have enough space, I would recommend normal installation. But if you are on short on space, use minimal installation. Check on download updates while installation and the third party software. The third party software checkbox will enable you to download crucial drivers such as Nvidia drivers, which will help minimize errors. Now Ubuntu will prompt you to select your installation type. Select something else. Now this will list all your partitions and drives. We need to search for the free space we created in our windows. As you can see 50 GB of free space. Select primary beginning of the space and use file systems as ext4. The mount point should be slash. In Linux, slash means root. Once you've selected the free space, all you need to do is click continue. It will warn you regarding formatting. But don't worry, it will just format the free space, which already has nothing. 
next step is to select your time zone now enter your name the name you want to give to your system pick a username and choose your password wisely well that was for the most of it now just sit back and keep an eye on the installer if you want to see the terminal you can always click on the small arrow Once you are done with the installation it will ask it will prompt you to remove the installation media and restart the system. Once you restart again you'll get a dual boot option. This is your chance to select the operating system during boot. Select Ubuntu. And as you can see a user has already been created by my name just type in your password and log into your system these are certain formalities after the first installation and you are ready to go Now there might be some issues during boot your screen might freeze or your wifi drivers might not work or else your keyboard clicks might not work it's all only a matter of time when you sit down google yourself and find the solution welcome to the world of open source thanks for watching this video if you have any doubts feel free to ask them in the comments or join our glug all in discord server We'll be available there to take up your doubts.